My friends, most of you know that I build and repair musical instruments and have been doing that for about 40 years. I like to build my instruments from scratch and that includes even cutting down some of the trees here on the farm and using them in parts of the instrument or to make the entire instrument from. In order to do that well, I wanted to build a quarter saw attachment for my bandsaw sawmill. And we'll get into that right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to build a quarter saw attachment for my homemade bandsaw sawmill that I built several years ago. What is a quarter saw attachment, you might ask? Well, the simplest way I can put it, it's like if you took a piece of round firewood and you slice the piece of round firewood just like a pie all the way around with all the slices intersecting the center point of that log. Each one of those slices then is taken out and you even slice it yet again and then you open it up like a book and glue it together and that would be the back of your instrument. So I'm making a machine to help me do those quarter saws, if you will. I'm not exactly sure why the name quarter saw came about other than if you did quarter a piece of firewood, the grain is basically going through that quarter uh, perpendicular, if you will, or pretty much perpendicular. The more you quarter saw it, the more perpendicular it is. In other words, the more slices you make. So that's what we're getting into. You'll see as we start this video that uh, the fabrication has already begun just a little bit. I hope you find the video enjoyable. My friends, I'm not used to filming projects that aren't filmed inside my luthier shop. However, I'm over on the dark side today and I thought it might be a good idea if I filmed this project. And I'm sitting on my sawmill and this sawmill is a homemade sawmill, a sawmill that I built totally from scratch in this very location. I have decided I want to add an attachment to the sawmill that would allow me to quarter saw backs for mandolins and violins and guitars even as far as that goes. Anything that would be, have an arch top, let's just say it that way. So the way I'm going to do this is add an attachment that looks something like this. I've already cut this angle and welded it together and now I'm going to attach this angle here on the on the sawmill. Let me just temporarily attach it with a clamp and I'll show you how it's going to work. What I'm going to do now, now that I've got this angle piece up here, this holds it up approximately oh 17 inches or so above the frame and therefore I can cut about a 34, 36 inch log. Roughly a 36 inch log would probably fit on here. And now I'm going to mount this on here and then this will spin. And what I can do is mount a round log on here facing the blade. So in other words, the, the round log would be right here, a short piece that's just long enough to make the back and the sides for a violin. And then I can come in and saw, turn it 90 degrees, saw, turn it, you know, 45, saw, turn it 45, saw, you know, or 90, I guess, at that point. But anyway, my point is you just keep sawing and sawing and sawing until you get the pie-shaped wedges as small as you need them for making backs uh, for violins and mandolins and per perhaps even arch top guitars. That's what this attachment's about. I'm going to get busy here and get this welded up. So the first thing I need to do is attach this where I can bolt this on to my frame. I, you know, as I have it clamped here, I've already marked where I want the holes. So I'm going to go into the drill press now, drill some holes in this, and then we'll drill some holes in the frame and thread the holes in the frame and be able to bolt this to it permanently. To the best of my ability, I've got this lined up to be able to drill these holes, so here we go. I've got the pilot holes drilled in approximately the same place on both ends. Now I'm going to increase the hole size to 3 eighths of an inch. Not the easiest thing to do when you're totally by yourself, but uh, it worked out. Okay, I've got this uh, A-frame clamped up. And the reason I have it clamped here is so that I can 
accurately mark the holes. So I've got a punch here that matches the 3 8 hole exactly. And now I'm going to uh, just tap it. It'll make the mark right dead center of the hole. And now that I've got that marked, I should be able to take the clamps off and drill the hole. And I'm going to drill these holes with a uh, appropriate size drill that I can tap it for the 3 8 bolt. Okay, according to the charts I looked up, uh, a 5 16 inch bit is what I need to drill the holes for a uh, 3 8 16 thread. So that didn't take much. Well, I don't have uh, real high-end taps and dies, but I just do happen to have a green field here. This is a good one. Tap for 3816. So we'll use that and see if it works. I like to run them through a good ways just to clean the threads real well. worked real well. Let's just see if the bolt fits it now. That works good. So now if we can tap this hole down here next to this, this is going to be more fun to tap because there's not much room. I'll just go ahead and do the other two off camera. Just got two more to go. Okay, now that we have all the holes tapped, let's put a bolt and washer on each one. Alright, well I'll have to do a little bit of grinding here to make this fit, I think. So, I'll do a little grinding off the bottom of that one. I think it'll drop it down where the holes will line up. Well, I would love to tell you that was easy, but it wasn't. It, I had to do about three or four tries. Had to enlarge the holes a little bit, grind a little off the bottom of these things to get the holes to line up good. But now I can start them all and turn them all by hand, so that's a good thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a wrench and tighten them up. Okay, they're all nice and snugged up and this is real nice and firm now. So uh, that's all we need. We'll move on to the next step. People are always asking me why I save stuff like this. You know, this round piece with this axle. 99% of the people out there would never have a use for it. Well, here's my use for it right here. And I have a lot more stuff like this saved that I can find uh, uses for down the road. I'm gonna weld this up now. Well, I think that's all we need to do on that. Hopefully this will still spin. Yep, so I think we're good. Well, now that I've got this welded on here, I, you know, I can see there's a teeny bit of play going this way, and I know a heavy log is going to want to pull it this way. So there's a natural hole in this already. I bent myself a piece of rebar, and I welded a, some threads on the end. And so what my plan is, is to hook this in here, and I'll, I'll make a connection down there, and I can just tighten it up, and that'll pull this this way and that'll give it a lot of strength and it's easy to hook up it won't be no big deal to hook up I've uh, cut a piece of angle this angle already had a great big hole in it that hole will give me enough flexibility for this angle I believe and I've got two holes in the bottom where I'm going to bolt it to this rail here first thing I've got to do is mark it and I will clamp it in place I'm just eyeballing most of this because it really don't matter. It'll be good enough for who it's for. Now I'm just going to use the transfer punch and mark the hole. Now I should be able to drill this out and put in my bolts. 
Okay, since I want to thread these holes, I'm using a letter F drill bit, and that's for a 5 16 18, and that's what I'm going to use. Let's see if those holes look like they line up. They look okay. So now we'll get the tap and thread those holes. We got a 5 16 18 thread per inch tap. Now yeah, we'll get some bolts and get that mounted. I think I've got the right bolts here. Haven't tried them yet. Yep, it's not going. All right, we're gonna have to work on the holes a little bit. Well, I changed the shape of the hole a little bit, just enough to make this work, and it seems to be working. So I'm gonna tighten down the bolts now. And now I'll find something to put on here and snug this up and we should be good to go. I got me a 3 8 nut and some washers and I'm just tightening this up. Yeah, it's a little wonky because it's at an angle and this isn't right. But that doesn't really matter as long as it just snugs up tight and that's what I'm doing here. So now that's, that's putting some tension on the, on the whole rig here. That'll keep this from pulling forward when I put a heavy log on it. So there you can see the whole rig I think pretty well with the uh, anchor down here up to that point up here where it can't pull then. So now the heavy log pulling that way won't be able to, to go that way. This wheel hub has threads in it, you know, for the old lug bolts that went in here. I'm gonna see if I can open them up. They look to be half inch 20 and that's what I've got here and it seems to be working. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to need at least three or four of these working so that I can anchor a plate on here that I can attach the log to. Right now I'm only planning to do three of these and that's a good thing because they're pretty hard to do. That was really a lot harder than it should have been. Wow, that's hard. It's amazingly hard. I really didn't think this would be this tough. Oh my gosh. It's crazy hard. The only reason I could think of this being this hard would be because these are cheap, uh, you know, Chinese taps. And they may not be right. Oh my gosh, that was hard. It's still hard. Way harder than it should be. It should be cutting those threads and it should get easier, but it's not. So I don't think it's cutting the threads. I think it's just going through the same threads. I'm afraid I'm gonna break the tap off it's that hard. I know you can't see that on video, but I'm really pushing hard. And even loosening it up, I'm pushing really hard. This, this tap must not be worth a dang. I'm gonna see if I have another one, a different one that's not a Chinese, Chinese one. I don't think I do in that size, but I'll check. Wow, that is crazy hard. Well, I found a Greenfield tap, believe it or not, that looks like it's the right size, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Here's one of the holes that I've already tapped. Let's just see if the Greenfield works any better. I would have to think it will. Yeah, look at the difference. Look at the difference. Huh? Nothing. Just goes right through it. No problem at all. So that other tap was oversized is really what it amounts to. I wished I would have just used this the first time. I didn't know I had this.
My friends, now that I've got this rig hooked up, I went looking for something to fit on this hub. And sure enough, I found the old wheel that I had saved. So I've got the wheel presently chucked up in my lathe. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Let's move over there. My friends, I'm kind of proud of this little tiny lathe. This potentially could be the world's largest mini lathe. It's a very small lathe. It's not the tiny ones that you get from China, but it's a small lathe and it comes from Grizzly. It's a G9729 combination lathe and mill, but it has a large swing, which is crazy handy sometimes. Right now, I've got it swinging this uh, large wheel. Well, it turns out this wheel is 16 and a half inches. It could possibly be an eighth inch bigger and still fit on there, <laughs> but not much more than that. Oh, it does say over the bed, 16 and a half inches. That's what it says. And guess what we're swinging here? 16 and a half inches exactly. <laughs> That's a pretty amazing. I'm about to turn this on and see how bad it uh, rocks and shakes and things. Let's see what happens. Well, that's probably spinning too fast for my purposes. Although it's working, I think I'll slow it down and see if that works a little better, or try to slow it down. I don't have a whole lot of options with the belts on this, but at least it looks like it's going to do what I want to do. Well, that's much better. It's still kind of fast, but that's a lot slower than it was. Brother John is a poor, hard-working man. His life is hard, but he does the best he can. He prays to God just to thank him for his brain. I'm trying to stop right when I think I can break it loose. It's really close to that, but I see it's cutting on one side more than the other. I'm going to go a little bit more. I hope I don't make a mistake here. And the roof over his head, Brother John. Lost his wife. I think I'm going to quit right there because I think I can break it loose and that way I won't have to worry about this thing flying around on the lathe. Well, I truly wish I would have put that on camera because all I did was hit one, one hit with a hammer and it just fell off. It was just one little, really wasn't even a real hard hit. So I guess I stopped at the perfect time. I'm glad I stopped. Now we're going to turn this down so it's not sharp. So we're going to have to put it back on here and see what we can do about that. Came around a gentle girl. Oh, we laid her in the ground, she was as light And her dying hit him hard Till he heard the voice of God, Brother John Trouble on earth is... That's pretty nice right there. I'm happy with that. Okay, now that we have it turned down, does it uh, look better on here? And I know it's still going to fit because we didn't change any of that, but... Yeah, that looks much nicer. It's just past the hub, which is what I want. And now I can get a plate and weld a plate right on here. And then the somehow or something, I'm not really sure how we'll do this yet. And then some way or another, we can lag bolt the log to the plate. But I'm not really sure about all that yet. I got to think it through. I just, I'm taking it one step at a time. But uh, that's going to work just real fine. I'm real happy with that. Just for the record, I turned it around this way just so you would see that if I put a plate across this surface, this hub would still hit the plate. So I have to turn it this way in order to, to clear the hub. Technically, it's supposed to be turned around the other way, but it doesn't really matter for my purposes. But this will give me clearance of the hub by a, an inch or better, so that should work just fine. I didn't show this, but I spent this morning making this circle jig for the plasma cutter. This is a ball bearing here and the plasma cutter rides in this loop and these washers allow it to roll around. I've got a pin right here and a lock. So I have it set for a 24 inch diameter circle right now. I just made it this morning so I have no idea how well this is going to work. All your sorrows soon will be gone sort of working. 
You did all you could and they're calling you home now, Brother John. This is a quarter inch plate steel. That's about all this torch can handle. So it's working. I just have to take a little more time with it. Trying to cut this quarter inch steel with my little plasma cutter is about like putting 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. It's all this little plasma cutter wants. It's gonna make it through it, I think. better I cut the uh, washers down to get it a little closer and that's helping they're probably still a hair too big but I'm gonna try with this for a while before I change my mind he was working in the field the sun was low and the earth was cool and still he heard his wife well quite honestly it's not working great but I've worked out a few more bugs. I've made the washers just a little bit smaller. I think that gives the uh, torch better contact and it's working better. Colin come join me now. He fell beside his plow brother John. In trouble on earth. My friends I was trying to do all kinds of complicated things to figure out a way to mount a log on here. I was going to make a ring around this and a big flat plate and then I just got to thinking that there's a chance I could just do it with just this wheel hub. And the problem was these bolts should come in from this other side and then bolt into this uh, threaded flange. But what I did was just drill out the holes on three of them and then I welded a lug nut on the inside and now I can put the bolts in from the outside. So when I take these bolts out, I can take this wheel off, use these square holes here to lug it into the log and then just pick the whole log and this up and then bolt it right here. Yeah, that's going to be awkward. It's not going to be easy, but I have a bobcat with forks and I can pick it up and hold it right there, bolt it in, and we should be good to go. So instead of getting complicated, I tried the easy, simple way. I'll show you what the lug nuts look like welded on the inside here. I had to change the lighting around so you could see this, but you can see I've got these nuts welded on the inside of this wheel hub. So when I take the bolts loose from the other side, this whole hub comes off and I can bolt it in from the back side. Right through these square holes is where the lugs will come out and, and lug into the log. This rim, I think, will actually be a good thing because it'll kind of bite into the end of the log also to keep it from moving around. I really think the whole design just kind of worked itself out and became much simpler. The next obstacle I had to figure out was how to keep this thing from moving. You can see here that I found an old latch. Now this latch was pretty much destroyed, by the way, and I just rebent it and made it work. It'll serve the purpose here. Like I can lock it into every hole and like where, it, where this bolt is, now you would say, well, you can't lock it in there. But 180 degrees from there, I can lock it in and it serves the same purpose. It really, I think, is almost foolproof. So I'm going to go ahead and just weld this, tack weld it in place. And I think that's going to serve my purpose perfectly. Is ending. All your sorrows soon will be gone. I think that'll do the job. Well, I won't lie, it was a bit of an ordeal getting that log on there, but not terribly hard. So anyway, we're about ready to try this thing. I haven't started the sawmill in over a week, so hopefully everything goes okay.
Well, I ain't gonna lie, I can't cut one much bigger than that because it will hit this here. Um, I didn't think about that. That's the one thing I didn't think about. But fortunately, this big log is big, is really that's the maximum size log I can cut. And that's a pretty big log. This is, uh, where this direction, it's uh, almost 22 inches. So that's about the biggest I can cut. Anyway, it sort of worked. Let's see if we can get out of the cut now. That might be the hard part. No, it's not too hard. It's coming right out, no problem. All right, so let's index it to the next spot and see how that goes. This could be the problem. You never know. I'm, I guess I'll just go to the very next uh, spot and try it and see how it goes. I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. Oh, you couldn't. They're calling you home now, Brother John. So I'm going to have to cut this off. There's always learning curve here. Well, be gone. You were a good man. You did all you could, and they're calling you home now, Brother John. that may be all I need to cut. That should do it right there, so one more cut. to be a learning curve first time you do anything and overall I'm pretty happy with that let me show you what the saw cuts look like so here's a close-up of what the saw cuts look like hopefully the camera is getting that it looks pretty good overall pretty happy with it there's a learning curve anytime you do something now each one of these can easily be split one more time and probably two more times and still get a pair of book matched backs so Right now, I don't think I'm going to do that on the sawmill. I think I'm just going to call this my test log and leave it like it is. Well, I'm completely out of breath. Since the bobcat wasn't here, I had to roll that thing in here by myself. That was all I wanted to do, I can tell you that. Now I'm going to take the lug bolts out. Well, the good news is the lug bolts held really well. can see where the ring is where this bit into the thing there so I think it's pretty solid uh, holding it I didn't feel like there was any slippage anywhere in this whole process so overall very successful so now it's time to saw this off and I guess I'll just lay it down to do that it's probably easier And now if the saw will start, we'll, we'll get going. Well, I 
of success. Whew. You can't really see the quality of the grain in this yet because it's wet, but it's pretty doggone nice. I'll clean those up and show them to you on a different camera later. Well, my friends, I think you've seen that uh, this does work pretty well. The main thing I need to do is put another indexing pin on the other side and set it halfway between the holes that we already have. So it's very obvious I do need to quarter saw it one more round all the way around. That'll make this thing work really, really well. So I'm gonna take it off the machine. I need to get all this cedar cut anyway. I don't need the quarter sawing machine on here right now, but I am gonna take this into the shop and add another uh, indexing pin on the other side, as I said, halfway between. So, it's time to remove it. Oh, by the way, I might as well add that the only other thing I'm gonna do to this is I'm gonna fix this pin where it can't come out of this hole right here. Um, I really thought just having the pin bent would be good enough, but as my luck usually happens, that pin almost came out right when I needed it most. I'm gonna fix that where that pin can't come out. Other than that, I think everything else works just about as good as I would have hoped for. That's all there is to it to take it off, so it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Well, I'm in the shop and I'm going to make another indexing pin for this other side and I think I got lucky one time here. This looks like this is going to work without any real modification. When this one is engaged on the other side, this one is exactly halfway between and that's exactly what I need. So then whenever I, you know, move this, I can go to this next hole and this one's unengaged. It just works perfectly. This, the other side now is halfway between. So that's gonna work out really easy. The problem is that this pin is way too big to fit these holes, and so was the other one. I had to turn it down also. But I'm gonna show you how I have to take this apart and then turn this pin down and then put it back together. You can see I have it mounted in the vise. I have to drill this rivet out right here first to take it apart. Looks like that's got most of the rivet out of there, I think. So now I'll put the whole thing in the vise here and see if I can take a punch and drive that pin out. Okay, so that should allow me to take this pin out now. So I've got the pin out now. Now we're gonna turn this in down in the metal lathe. And I'm gonna turn this down to a size that will work in those holes. We're gonna to wanna to go down to 450. And presently we're at five, 20 something so I'm taking about I'm dialing in about 15 thousandths at a time which takes off 30 thousandths on the diameter fit most of the holes but some of the holes are a little rusty I think I'm just gonna give it another spring pass and then we'll call it good I think that'll do just fine it, it would have probably worked the way it was so now I'm gonna put this back together the uh, turn down in is over here. You can see the other end is much bigger. 
and I turned a little bit, I didn't show this on camera, but I turned a little bit of this uh, neck off to make the rivet part a little longer since I had to cut that off. And now I'm going to drive this in here, or hopefully drive it in here, and see if we can't brad it back out over. Uh, might have to go to the... Let's see here if I can... You gotta get the bar supported better. There, I think that'll support the bar. There we go. Yeah, that drove it down in there further. Therefore, I should be able to brad this peen this rivet over and make it stay. Well, I don't know how well this is going to work. I was going to try to just do it directly on the anvil, but unfortunately uh, there's no way to hold it good. So I've got this uh, in the vise here a little bit. There's a piece of steel under this piece right here, and I'm just going to try to brad it out. I don't think that'll pull out of there. It. There's not much force pulling it out of there anyway, and uh, I think that'll work. If it comes out, I can always thread it and put a bolt in there. That's what I did on the other one. But this one here seems salvageable, so I thought I'd just go ahead and use the original pin. Well, I'm going to try to weld this in place. Well, that's tacked in place. Let's see if it's... Uh, still workable here. A little warm. Does seem to be indexed perfectly. Seems, seems just perfect really. I can't see as it could be any better. Well my friends, I think the uh, quarter saw attachment for the sawmill was a fairly good success. As always, there's little things to work out and little things that can be improved, and I'm making some of those improvements as I speak. Here's what one of the rough sawn uh, pieces looks like, the way it came off the uh, quarter saw attachment. Now, I have already reworked the quarter saw attachment, as you saw, to cut these actually thinner, because this is quite a lot, a wide piece. So this will actually be cut yet one more time on the quarter saw attachment. But in the meantime, since I didn't have that on there when I was cutting those, I went ahead and just ripped this one down on the bandsaw in the shop. And you can see I've also sized this one a little bit better and uh, sanded it on one side just to give you some idea what the wood looks like. It's beautiful uh, walnut. Uh, I'm happy with it. Very clear. Very few inclusions. I mean, if you look hard, there's a little inclusion right there. There's a little inclusion right here. A lot of those inclusions, if you uh, set your pattern on there correctly, you'll be able to avoid them and or they'll be carved out as you carve down into the wood. I thought you might find it interesting, even though this log had been sawed about 10 or 12 years ago, been laying out there in the weather all this time, when you put your moisture meter on it, it goes to instant overload, OL. So it's way wetter than 30%, even after setting that long in a log form. Um, I would probably slice this yet one more time, and uh, I'll do the th fine slicing on the bandsaw in the shop, I would imagine. Just this one piece is enough to make the uh, back for, say, a mandolin or a violin or ukulele or anything else if you wanted to carve the back. Just to give you rough dimensions, this is uh, a little over two inches at the big end, big width, so it'll be about an inch on that edge, which is about right. And I've got this at six and three quarters right now on the, on the width this way, which is a little more than average. But, uh, it should work to build a, a mandolin or whatever. So if this is something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I will possibly go into business selling some of these down the road. You just never know. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you would, please give me a thumbs up, share the video on your social media, and make sure that you have subscribed. I would very much appreciate it. We're getting very close to our 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next video.